No, no, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. I'm Snake Aisri from Astrophile Education Services, New Delhi, and I welcome you all to the fourth episode on eclipses. Today's topic, how to photograph the eclipse, special tips and tricks for AAC 2020. In this episode, we will talk about uh, how to photograph the eclipse with and uh, without the equipment, what all is Hello, minimum uh, required, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Snake what Aisri all from you can expect, and uh, Sorry about that. And uh, we're going to uh, talk about what all equipments that are bare minimum you require. And we are going to learn from none other than the expert in this matter, Mr. Ajay Talwar. Mr. Ajay Talwar has been traveling and watching solar eclipses along with his wife, Neelam, and later with uh, his sons, Arjun and Nakul. The first eclipse that he watched was the one in February 1980. The curfew eclipse, he was at Delhi and the eclipse was partial. In 95, Diwali eclipse was his first total solar eclipse, for which he had spent about two years planning, location, and photography. He has had an eclipse failure too. For him and Neelam, the eclipse of 11 August 1999 was clouded out at Metz, France. As hindsight, they should head it for Turkey, where it was clear. They did go to Turkey for the eclipse with their children in 2006. It was a beautiful sight of the eclipse, over the Mediterranean Sea. In 2009, the monsoon eclipse, he organized the eclipse flight in India to fly over Gaya to see the eclipse out of the right side window of the plane. 2010 was the longest annular of the millennium, the path crossing in Southern India. In 2017, he traveled to Redfish Lake in Idaho to see the total solar eclipse of 2017, which is also called as the Great American Eclipse. The Annular at UT Radio Telescope in 2019, and now he is all set for the deepest annular eclipse in many years to come. Apart from an eclipse chaser's family, his astrophotography workshops in the Himalayas are well known. His company, Aperture Telescopes, is probably the only company currently making high quality uh, Dobsonian telescopes in India. So let's welcome Ajay. Ajay, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Sne, uh, thank you for organizing this. Uh, happy to join and share my uh, tips and tricks about eclipse photography. One week to go now, uh, next Sunday, today is Sunday. So next Sunday is the hot eclipse. Uh, it'll be hot, <laughs> 50 degrees, yeah. uh, maybe uh, uh, something around 45 to 50 degrees in Sirsa. Right. And... Uh, so this is a very interesting eclipse passing through India. Great. So without wasting any time, uh, let's start with the talk, Ajay. Uh, what do you want to share with us? How you can educate us about photographing the eclipse? Can we begin? I will. Yeah, I will take a moment and uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, I have a presentation uh, prepared. Uh, just give me one second and I'm going to share the screen with everybody. Okay, are you able to see the screen now? Yes, Ajay. So uh, this eclipse, uh, uh, which is coming in India uh, on the solstice day when the si sun is at its highest, uh, will pose some challenges because uh, the eclipse is going to happen at almost 80 degrees, almost at zenith. The uh, path uh, is crossing five states in India. Uh, starting from Rajasthan, and then it crosses over to uh, Punjab and Haryana border. Then for a short uh, distance in Uttar Pradesh, 
and finally uh, in uttarakhand so this is a very interesting eclipse uh, with respect to the uh, landmarks the landmarks is that it goes through just india like it starts from the deserts of rajasthan uh, and then the rain fed areas like fields and canals of punjab and haryana and then uh, it crosses the shivaliks dune valley then it goes over the foothills um, of himalayas tihri dam and then uh, it continues on to high peaks uh, some of the high peaks that are uh, inside the path are the highest one is hardeol then you have tirsuli and many other so if somebody climbs up hardeol peak uh, which is very close to the uh, point of greatest eclipse in india it will be a world record to watch an eclipse from such a height 7000 meters and more hardeol is very close to the center line so if somebody wants to set a world record you can climb up uh, in one of the peaks so even uh, xavier jubier who has set uh, many records in eclipse chasing like he has been to antarctica and he has been to the coldest spot on earth so this is one record you can set if you climb up uh, hardeol but uh, there's another kind of record you can set you can uh, watch the eclipse from 50 degrees uh, nowhere in the world uh, 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 this kind of hot eclipse has been seen uh, xavier jubier has been to a uh, been to a partial solar eclipse last year uh, to a place in russia uh, which is called the, the pole of the cold and he had watched that partial eclipse at minus 50 degrees centigrade over there so if you go to suratgarh there will be 100 degree difference uh, in the coldest place for an eclipse and the hottest place for the eclipse so that's a certain kind of record you can set uh, and uh, stand on the uh, sand dune in suratgarh and come back melted <laughs> well this presentation um, sne has asked me to uh, 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 tell uh, everybody about photography of this eclipse so i am going to start with what is so special about this eclipse so there are a uh, couple of types of solar eclipses and it all depends uh, on the day of the eclipse whether the size of the moon is larger or whether the size of the sun is larger so if on the date uh the distance between earth and sun is less the size of the sun is obviously apparently more and uh, similarly it happens with moon also so the size of the moon uh, varies by a little bit uh, as the moon orbits around the earth it uh, apparently grows in size and grows smaller so on the left you can see a total solar eclipse of 24th october 95 on this day the moon was much larger uh, the moon was larger than the sun and it was able to cover the sun for a total solar eclipse in the middle you can see the annular solar eclipse of 15 january 2010 when the size of the moon was smaller and then of course uh, you have types of eclipse which is hybrid which travels over the surface of the earth and changes from either from total to annular or from annular to total or sometimes from annular to total to annular or and vice versa uh, there are some uh, partial eclipses happening uh, which are also called the non central eclipses which means that the shadow of the moon passes either over the north pole of the earth or below the south pole of the earth so it uh, becomes a partial solar eclipse also called a non central eclipse because the moon is not passing through the center of the sun so what is uh, so special about this particular eclipse next sunday the apparent diameter of the moon is as i have written on the screen 31 minutes and 18.08 seconds and on that day the apparent diameter of the sun is just a little bit more 31 minutes and 28.46 seconds so the ratio of moon divided by sun diameters is this time in this eclipse is 0.994 so this eclipse is almost total i want to compare this uh, ratio with the annular of 26 december which happened uh, just the last eclipse season uh, less than 6 months ago 
the apparent diameter of moon was 31 minutes 8.68 and the sun was 32 minutes 31.5 seconds with a ratio becoming 0.958 so you can see that the ratio this time is 0.994 and last time in december 2019 the ratio was 0.958 the ratio of moon divided by sun well as a comparison i also want to say uh, the annular eclipse of 15 jan 2010 10 years back the ratio was so different that the uh, ratio of moon divided by sun was 0.91 the moon was really small uh, and that's why the eclipse was the longest of the millennium so this eclipse the ratio of the moon is uh, 0.994 and it's going to be almost total This is the speciality of this particular eclipse. This is a keep in mind that this is a annular eclipse. It's not a total solar eclipse. It's not a total solar eclipse. You cannot watch it with your eyes. It is simply is not possible, not advisable. You should not do it. A filter is required all the time to watch the eclipse with your eyes. So let me. Um, Uh, play this video, uh, which shows different types of printers. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you some visual printers. This one is from a company called Rainbow Rainbow Symphony, and the printer material is from a company called Thousand Oaks. And you can see that the uh, the printer size is quite big. So this size over here is quite big, and it's comfortable to watch through this printer. But it does not have any uh, stack kind of uh, thing to place over your eyes. This particular filter was uh, made by uh, the Vigyan Prasad. You can see that the filter size is very small. So if your eye distance between your eye does not match this filter, it's going to be very uncomfortable. Okay, this is one filter which I uh, bought from a company in Bangalore, and. Uh, uh, So this is also a, a, a filter which has got. Um, you can place it over your ears. Well, you have noticed that it has got uh, threads over it, so you can hang it around your neck, and it will always be there. It will never get lost, and nobody will ask. For it. This particular solar filter, I made it into a window because it's very comfortable because it covers the, your entire face because you're looking towards the sun. And the sun doesn't shine in your eyes, so this kind of large filter is very uh, comfortable. Now coming on to photographic solar filters, uh, this one is made from a black and white film, which is uh, fully exposed and fully developed. Uh, this happens to be a very famous film, 2415, very uh, uh, fine grain, high resolution film uh, from Kodak. Now of course it does not be made. So this is a uh, printer made from a black and white film which contains silver. Going on to a uh, kind of filter which will provide uh, image of the sun as white. These are from Bader, and you can see that uh, I have made this for a refractor. Uh, all filters have been constructed out of uh, either wood, or the frames of uh, embroidery that you get in the market. Otherwise, cardboard. So this is for a finder. And uh, here I'm showing a filter, which is sandwiched between two UV filters. So you can see on the side that uh, this is a camera filter, UV filter. Two filters have been joined, and in the middle, uh, filter has uh, a round filter has been placed. So again, this is a barter filter, and uh, you can screw it on to your camera lens and easily. So you can use this uh, two sandwich UV filter to make a interaction. Uh, well, this is a thousand oak film and it provides a orange uh, color sun. And you can see that it's been built out of several layers of cardboard on it on my own. This is for particularly for a refractor. And uh, you should always take care that any filter that you use uh, must not have any pinholes or it should not be broken. This particular filter is for a uh, 8 inch telescope. It has also been built uh, using a cardboard. Uh, and always you should ensure that the filter does not come off the telescope accidentally or 
by wind or uh, any other. So children should be supervised because if you remove the filter suddenly and somebody is watching through the telescope, it's going to be very uh, dangerous. This particular filter has been made out of a embroidery frame, wooden embroidery frame. So uh, it fits over an 8 inch telescope. And this is a barter film which will provide uh, sun which is white in color. And finally, here is a filter which will show the landscape and you can uh, uh, put this on a, another tripod and the small filter you can place in front of the camera so that it covers the sun. So you can have the landscape as well as the uh, filtered sun using this kind of uh, filter that I have made. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, the sun in white color. Well, that is a barter filter. Uh, on the left, you can see it over here. This white color uh, is provided by the barter filter. And uh, this one is also a barter filter, this one also. And the other two over here are uh, the Thousand Oaks uh, filter, which, is, uh, which contains carbon inside the film. This particular one photograph is also uh, taken by a Thousand Oak film, uh, which provides the orange, yellow, orange sun. So I now prefer uh, the orange sun uh, rather than the white sun provided by the barter, barter filter. Uh, well, uh, I am going to a place in Sirsa, and uh, what I have done is uh, printed out a local circumstances on an A4 sheet and actually laminated it also. So these local circumstances I have uh, got from Xavier Jubia's website, uh, the interactive map. If you guys don't know about it, then you could visit a website called xjubier.free.fr. I'm going to sh go to that website and show you a screenshot. But this uh, local circumstances card uh, details everything. Uh, the time of contacts and maximum, and at what altitude in azimuth the sun will be present. And furthermore, I have added the uh, change time in IST, as well as added the duration between the first contact and the second contact, which in my case is one hour and 38 minutes, almost 39 minutes. So it's a very long eclipse. The total eclipse will last for three hours and 25 minutes. So uh, this will, uh, a card which is uh, present uh, for the use during the eclipse is very helpful to keep track of the time. Well, now uh, I come to uh, the kind of, uh, kind of photography that you can do in a solar eclipse. And as I mentioned before, this is a particularly special eclipse where it's almost total. You can't watch it with a, a naked eye without a filter but you might want to use your camera for photographing this eclipse without a filter. Mind you, uh, you should not put your eye on the back of the camera, but rather use a live view of the camera. So this is the first example of uh, what kind of photography that you can do uh, in a solar eclipse. Um, this particular video is from the 2017 eclipse at Redfish Lake, uh, Idaho. Uh, my son Arjun had shot this video on an iPhone. And in this video, you can see how dramatic the light dimming is. It goes down dramatically and comes back in an instant, uh, again, dramatically. Next, uh, the ambient light uh, dimming, I want to show you uh, in a annular eclipse. This particular annular eclipse is uh, from 26 December 2019. I had gone to uh, the UTI radio telescope. And in the video, you can also see um, the half a kilometer long UTI radio telescope moving. <coughs> Let me tell you, this uh, telescope is such a large uh, structure. It's humongous. And standing under it is really uh, fascinating. Now, uh, the video will just come up to uh, the ambient light dimming that happens in an annular solar eclipse. Okay, here's the part of the video which shows that the light is going down as the annular eclipse progresses, but it never really gets dark. 
it's not dramatic it's very gradual in fact the three hours eclipse we could see everything all the time the light dimming was not even apparent so uh, you may want to shoot such a video which shows the ambient light dimming this is a very special eclipse almost total so the ambient light dimming will be very dramatic although not as dramatic as the total solar eclipse but let's see what happens unless you catch it you will not be able to you will not know what happens so uh, the conditions the requirements for capturing the ambient light dimming are that um, you have to capture a time lapse before the eclipse starts your camera should be ready it should keep on clicking the time lapse throughout till the eclipse is over and even uh, a little bit afterwards you can use a wide angle lens and put a interesting subject mind you you do not have to place uh, uh, your direct your camera towards the sun but you have to place uh, you have to direct your camera to some interesting subject under the sun so you can use eclipse watchers and as i suggested you must start before the eclipse and end after the eclipse the requirement of uh, such a time lapse is that you keep a constant exposure you cannot keep your camera on av mode so that uh, it will compensate for the light dimming and you will never never actually see the light dimming in this eclipse so you must keep a constant exposure and keep, run that constant exposure throughout the 3 hours 25 minutes of this eclipse and my suggestion is to keep an interval of the time lapse photography to just a few seconds maybe 10 seconds or uh, uh, 15 seconds but uh, mind you it will require uh, a long battery storage as well as you must uh, check the storage card will it be able to take all those exposures that are going to happen uh, at a rapid interval of 10 seconds so suppose uh, your uh, storage card is able to handle only this a little bit few so what you could do is increase the interval so that the number of exposures come down so this is one uh, very special photography project that uh, you guys can take up on the right uh, here is a picture of uh, the light uh, during this is uh, during the solar eclipse of 2009 it was taken from the left side of the window of the plane on the right side the eclipse was happening but the shadow was falling on the left side and you can see in the sky uh, the sky is very dark and, uh, and far away on the horizon there is still light so this is a kind of uh, uh, photography that you can do so suppose you are uh, uh, this kind of ambient light dimming project you can also do uh, at a place called sarkanda devi which is actually just 3 kilometers away from the uh, uh, path of the eclipse but it is a vantage point you can see all of Gud uh, all of dehradun from sarkanda devi it's a vantage point uh, so if you uh, happen to climb up the sarkanda devi and shoot towards dehradun you will get a beautiful picture a beautiful time lapse of ambient light dimming and maybe also the shadow crossing over dehradun so this particular project will not require any uh, solar filter and any special kind of camera you can use a cell phone for time lapse photography you can use any kind of camera for time lapse photography so this is a project which is very interesting and does not require uh, special equipment or special uh, uh, you know filters everything again some simple photography but very dramatic you know artists uh, like it very much uh, although the scientists uh, um, do not uh, go for these kind of projects but these are very artistic pictures see on the left you can see uh, the on the left top left picture okay here's my mouse you can see it uh, you can see a lot of annulars which are scattered annular eclipses which are scattered on the ground and over here also it is almost annular and this particular one photograph has been taken in 2010 uh, this is this photograph is actually uh, under a pot this was a sort of gamla which was lying on the terrace and uh, wild grass was growing in the pot you know uh, and this grass is making the eclipses scatter on the ground uh, it was really uh, 
uh, a very artistic picture and it does not require any uh, special camera but it does require special observation special attention so if you're watching the eclipse in the sky just look down under the trees uh during the eclipse you get strange shadows like on the left i had uh, uh, during the eclipse of 2019 december i had made a small pinhole with my hand and finger and uh, shot this uh, uh, annular spread on the ground also uh, you can see that this hand is uh, producing the kind of series of eclipses over here so all these strange shadows are very interesting to capture uh what i always do uh, during an annual eclipse uh, this is a map of india southern india and the eclipse is crossing uh, uh southern india so this particular diagram i made uh, in the eclipse of 2010 where the eclipse path was very wide and this particular photo is the result that i got out of this setup so this is a plywood and uh, the diagram has been made on it and pinholes has been drilled so uh, the result is like this and you could also use a kitchen colander uh, various shapes to produce the eclipses on a particular surface so if you want to take up this project you should uh, identify the surface beforehand like the surface has to be like a white sheet or a, a concrete ground uh, maybe so you should identify places where there are trees and this particular image i have made for uh, the upcoming eclipse okay this was for 2010 and this image is from 2019 and now 2020 uh, the eclipse path is very thin and is passing through uh, the northern state so this is the uh, template that i'm going to use for this particular eclipse so this is uh, uh, photography this is a kind of photography pinhole patterns that you can shoot during an eclipse again this doesn't require special equipment or filters but it does require uh, observation and composition and more of artistic uh, uh, endeavor now uh, this particular uh, image uh, in this image you can see the uti radio telescope and then you can see a ply board with the uh, pinholes in the form of uh the uti radio telescope and then there is uh, there is a butter paper uh, like a tracing paper which is translucent and uh, the pinholes are projecting the eclipse on this butter paper and here is the cell phone camera which is capturing it all continuously in a time lapse so this is a uh, the entire setup has been placed on a polari which is tracking the sun so uh, this is a very interesting project that i took up in 2019 but it actually failed let me show you a video and watch very carefully watch very carefully it will happen suddenly there it happened so the annular went and passed by but uh, why am i saying that it failed because the uh, pinholes were a little too large uh, the distance between the distance between the pinholes and the screen was approximately 12 inch and uh, i had followed the rule of uh, 100th like the pinhole should be 100th of the distance but it really didn't work so i made i had made 4 mm uh, holes in the plywood but in reality uh, i should have made 2 mm holes so this time i have planned 2 mm holes and it's working nicely so this kind of uh, video i'm going to shoot this time so it shows the ambient uh, area also and it shows the screen it shows some uh, eclipse watchers coming in and out so this is a kind of uh, thing you can do although all of the equipment is not very simple but still uh, not very complicated another popular photography that uh, everybody aspires to do is capture the entire eclipse in uh, one frame well in the days of film when we used to film uh, when we used to use film for eclipse photography it was uh, quite a 
adventure because you had to capture all of the eclipse on one piece of film so here you can see some antique cameras uh, lined up on top of the school desk this particular image was made in the eclipse of uh, 1995 24th october 1995 uh, at a place called barka khana near ranchi now this was a total solar eclipse so uh, here you can see that the partial sequence is running 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 and this partial sequence has to be clicked using the solar filter and then in the middle you have the total solar eclipse in fact you can see the diamond ring over here and this particular shot was taken with without the filter so in this part you can see that there is a large gap uh, between the exposures and much before the uh, totality started the filter was removed and a shot was taken without the filter and then the filter was replaced and the rest of the eclipse was captured so in the time uh, uh, on the film it was a really difficult endeavor but for a total solar eclipse you are supposed to remove the filter in the middle when there is totality here is another example of the entire eclipse shot on the same uh, film again the filter was removed during totality this particular image was made uh, in the eclipse of 2006 29 march 2006 and we were at turkey for this eclipse and this was the first eclipse which i went with my entire family my younger son was 2 years old my elder son was 5 uh, years old and there were a uh, couple of friends from across the world who had gathered at a place called sidde turkey to see this eclipse now in this digital world it become very easy to uh, photograph this entire eclipse and make a one uh, uh, make a composite so you can keep on clicking and even bracket you know you can shoot various exposures and then later on the computer you can choose what exposures you want to combine so this uh, image on the left is uh, from the eclipse of 2010 and you can see the arabian sea at the bottom and uh, the uh, camera was fixed and it was clicking continuously and since this was a annular solar eclipse the filter need not be removed from uh, the front of the lens at any part on the right you can see the eclipse composite from the annular eclipse of 2019 december 26 and you can also see the uti radio telescope in the background now uh, the important part of this uh, making such a composite is that you have to shoot the annular Uh, with the filter but you also need to make a background image without filter so in this on the left side in this uh, image the background shot was clicked after the eclipse was over and you can see that the sun is shining over here on the clouds and this particular image background image was taken in the evening but uh, similarly on the right side with the uti radio telescope this particular image was made before sunrise and uh, i was capturing a series of images before sunrise and i was lucky to get uh, three birds um, in one frame so one two and there's one bird sitting over here and finally uh, when the eclipse started i had put on the filter uh, in front of the camera and this particular sequence was uh, clicked and i had used a lot of brackets thinking that clouds will come in the middle and i will have to change the exposure so uh, i used a bracket of 7 so but i used uh, uh, only one uh, on, uh, periodic images which are clicked with bracket so i did, didn't have to use all of them i used only a few selected ones to make this sequence so you have uh, the opportunity with the digital cameras to shoot as many as you want and then later use only what you want to use in this Uh, type of eclipse composite photograph a little discussion about aperture shutter speed and iso what should you keep well for this a rehearsal is very much necessary there are a lot of variables like what is the f ratio of your equipment what is the kind of filter that you are using will it be uh, cloudy on the day of the eclipse whether there will be thin clouds thick clouds so all these 
variables are there and you need to decide what kind of exposure you are going to give well uh, there is no set rule but the histogram is your friend so now i have a image over here of the partial eclipse and over here i see a histogram so this is a part of the histogram that i am going to concentrate on so these are the dark pixels and these are the white pixels on this graph which we call the histogram so here you can see the exif details of this particular image the uh, the exposure was 1 by 1000th of a second and the f ratio is not shown because uh, the camera was connected to a telescope so this is uh, i can tell you this was f5 and iso used was 100 iso 100 so here very uh small but you can see the blue component of this image you can see the green component of this image and you can see the brightest part is the red component of this image now this histogram is perfect is not overexposed is not underexposed but you should seriously consider that if you have clicked a image on your digital slr camera you are standing under the sun will you be able to see the screen and watch the histogram this is a very small line over here you know you at the moment you are sitting in, inside your room and watching this histogram on a computer screen in a darkened room it's very easy but the difficulty lies that you are clicking under the sun and you want to watch the histogram so a rehearsal is so much necessary that you go out today you go out tomorrow in the noon sun and click uh the sun and watch the histogram put on your filter click the sun and see what appears on the histogram you will face a lot of difficulties then you will say oh i need an umbrella so umbrella should go in your check checklist and that is these small small things are so important and then when you standing under the noon sun and suppose you wear a pair of spectacles like me those spectacles will get uh, drenched with your uh, sweat because you are sweating profusely under the noon sun so i have now started wearing a bandana to prevent uh, the sweat going on to my spectacles so these are small things but very important and how did i uh, come to know that i need a bandana because i extensively rehearse 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 here and then i found uh, find out all the problems that i face and then overcome and i do not depend on the last day oh i am at a hotel i am uh, outside somewhere and then uh, i am sweating i can't see the screen but i have haven't completed my checklist so my uh, photography will be a kind of failure so rehearsal is extremely important i will uh, share another resource which is available on the internet to calculate the uh, shutter speed this uh, calculator for solar eclipses has been made by uh, Xavier Jobier let me go to this particular website and show you show its actual operation so in the google if you type in the google search if you type solar eclipse exposure calculator you will get many uh, answers but uh, in my case the first one is the solar eclipse exposure calculator from Xavier Jobier if i go on this uh, website uh, i can select what i want to click whether my uh, filter is bright or very dark so if i want to click bailey's beads i will click, click over here then sensitivity is f8 particularly in my case uh, i will be using a f ratio of very slow f32 so uh, this particular calculation has given me uh, indicative exposure of 1 by 4 seconds but he has also given a little leeway that means if there are clouds or if there is haze you should increase the uh, exposure to 1 by 2.5 seconds but here i have selected bailey's beads in an annular with a nd filter of 5.6 density what if i go to bailey's beads in a total without filter 
the brightness value becomes 11.6 and the exposure suggested exposure goes down since it is without ex, uh, without filter the suggested shutter speed goes to 1 by 400th of a second and if i want to uh, photograph the chromosphere then uh, at the moment the brightness value of bailey's beads is 11.6 if i click on chromosphere you will see that the chromosphere is slightly less bright than a bailey's bead and prominences are also slightly less bright than uh, the chromosphere and so on and so forth the lower corona the inner corona is also a little less bright so these are the exposure suggested exposure values uh, which you can uh, uh, bring into practice remember there is no rehearsal for this so what do you do well you will have to bracket extensively so you'll have to bracket extensively so what is bracketing here i have shown a, a screenshot of my uh, image browser and you can see that there are so many types of colors of the sun so what am i trying to show well this particular sorry this particular exposure on the right side was the correct exposure all these images are from the annular solar eclipse of december 2019 which i had clicked at uti radio telescope so here i have used a bracket of 7 that means when the camera was clicking once it was not clicking once it was clicking seven different exposures so this is the right exposure over here is the right exposure in the next one is slightly less that means minus and the next one is slightly more that means plus and the next one is minus minus and the next one is plus plus and the subsequent one is minus 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 and plus 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 so what is the difference uh, of exposure in the right uh, excuse me the right uh, exposure and the next one there is a difference of one aperture one shutter speed stop so if you know photography you will understand very well what i am trying to say so there are uh, full stops there are one third stops there are one half stops so i had given a bracketing of 7 using full stops that means i was capturing uh, a wide range of exposures so when the camera was clicking once it was not clicking once it was clicking seven pictures why did i do so much bracketing well i did so much bracketing because i was at uti and in the hills you never know when clouds will come so if since my uh, setup was running automated and unattended and if there was a cloud in front of the sun i would still have got a correct exposure one of the exposures in these bracket of 7 would have been correct so this is bracketing and very important in solar eclipse automated photography well this particular video is jlt just like that this is the annular eclipse of 26 december 2019 i was at uti and now the eclipse is crossing behind the uti radio telescope so uh, i just made a little i don't know a montage or a uh, collage as i said this is jlt just like that so coming to bailey's beads this particular eclipse next sunday is bailey's bead special okay uh, in this slide i want to discuss what focal length would you like to use for a eclipse composite okay so here is a formula field of view uh, in degrees is equal to 2 multiplied by tan inverse of sensor width divided by 2 into focal length so i have also made a table 
below uh, if you are using a crop sensor and using a lens of 18 mm focal length you will get a field of view of 63 63 degrees into 45 so how long is this eclipse from start to finish the eclipse is going on for 3 hours uh, let's say 3 hours and 30 minutes so 3 hours and 30 minutes means 180 and let me take a calculator out and show it to you so uh, Three hours multiplied by sixty, which means one eighty minutes plus thirty minutes. So the total eclipse is of a duration of about two hundred and ten minutes. And as we know that uh, to move one degree, it takes four minutes. One degree movement it takes four minutes. So if we divide this uh, number of degrees by four, sorry, number of minutes by four, we will get. 52.5 degrees as the span of the eclipse 52.5 that means from start con first contact to last contact the eclipse is spanning 52.5 so uh, rounding it off to say you can say that the eclipse is spanning 55 degrees will your camera capture it will the focal length be enough to capture all from c1 to c4 well here is a handy calculator if you are using a 18 mm lens and a crop sensor you will be able to capture all of the eclipse on the larger side if you are using a 24 mm lens and a full frame camera you will be able to capture it on the smaller side also so you can make a portrait orientation picture like this one so this is a concept image i have clicked this uh, gurudwara in uh, a place called tohana in punjab and on top i have placed the eclipse this is a concept image this is not an actual image so i was just contemplating how to frame my eclipse so i have a landscape photograph which was clicked without the filter before sunrise and then i have placed the filtered shots on top so uh, what focal length you should you use to make a entire eclipse composite well here is a table and you can decide so this is one of the calculations that you will be doing for this particular kind of photograph here i have uh, two cameras lined up uh, just behind this okay i can move this okay so these cameras are lined up to make a entire eclipse composite and you can see there that they have been tied very rigidly to the railing and the focus is also taped up pretty nicely so usually what i do is one day before one day before the eclipse i uh, at the particular time of the eclipse i frame my picture that means i point my camera and put the sun in the middle at the time of the total eclipse or annular eclipse one day before and then i tie down the eclipse uh, sorry i tie down the camera and tripod and next day i have to come and shoot without any framing problem so this particular eclipse is a very extremely high altitude uh, you can you will have to use a wide angle lens and uh, if you want to capture a foreground but if you go close to a building then the building gets higher so you can frame it uh, and framing one day before is very important you should have a rigidly fixed tripod you have to shoot the landscape before sunrise without any filter and then you can shoot the eclipse uh, exposure at short interval with the filter take care to include annularity suppose your interval is 30 seconds or 40 seconds you will miss annularity because the annularity of duration of annularity is just 30 seconds this kind of uh, eclipse uh, it's an annular eclipse this photography will always be filtered it's not a total solar eclipse and you must uh, do a little bit of bracketing of exposures that means if there's some clouds or haze coming in so uh, you should bracket your exposures by 3 5 or even seven if there are heavy clouds expected at your site 
well if you want to see a live broadcast uh, i will be broadcasting live uh, and the uh, using uh, this kind of setup so this is a finder and a camera which will be connected uh, or oh, actually this is a uh, this will be providing to a screen uh, i will be broadcasting on youtube using a cell phone behind a reflector so if you want you can go to youtube.com slash ajay talwar and watch my live uh, eclipse on 21st june a little bit discussion of focal length and size of sun that you will get so here you are sne i want to ask you a question when i i am moving this uh, screen uh, i am moving this uh, live view uh, the webcam view on my screen does it also affect your screen no oh it doesn't okay okay uh, i'm okay i get it i get it okay just a little bit discussion of uh, the focal length and the size of sun that you will get so the formula is if you divide by focal length sorry if you divide the focal length of the lens by 110 that is the size of the sun that you will get on the sensor so if you use a 200 mm lens you will get a size of sun 1.8 mm now here is very important it does not matter whether the sensor is a full frame or a crop frame the focal length is 200 mm and the size of the sun will be 1.8 mm if you increase the uh, focal length to a telescope of 2000 mm the size of sun will increase by 10 uh, multiplied by 10 18.18 mm so if you are uh, wondering whether the sun will fit uh, into my uh, camera if i am using a very long focal length so if you have a crop sensor it would be advisable to use a 1000 mm focal length lens if you are using a full frame camera uh, a 15 uh, you know uh, you will have to be less than 2000 mm so that uh, the sun fits inside comfortably and your tracking doesn't have to be extremely accurate so this is the uh, table where you can see whether the sun will fit in your image and what size it will be you can shoot uh, the progress of the eclipse uh, at regular intervals uh, i would be shooting at an interval of 10 seconds which is very aggressive which is very uh, uh, consuming like it consumes a lot of power you need a lot of storage uh, card and so on and so forth uh, another thing i have noticed that uh, as soon as the annularity ends people start to walk off so if you are a serious photographer you must wait till the fourth contact do not rush away here i want to show you some part of the annular eclipse so this is uh, Uh, a partial stage and then uh, this is near the second contact and near the maximum eclipse and near the third contact and then partial phase now i want to bring your attention to this image which is uh, taken at the maximum point when the moon was exactly in the middle of the sun so you can see that the brightness of the sun is uniform all around now i want to bring your attention to this photograph which is near the second contact you can see that the limb of the sun is darker which is very apparent in this photograph so if you watch this photograph you will not be able to you will not be able to perceive that the limb is darker unless i bring your attention to it if the eclipse is partial you will not be able to see that the limb is darker so now i am bringing your attention to it and you can see that this is darker but in this particular image it is really apparent that the limb is darker than the sun and it is really much much darker than the bright sun so your exposures have to be tuned 
your uh, rehearsal exposures have to be tuned so when during rehearsal you click a photograph of the sun it will be a full sun so you must watch the periphery of the sun to decide what exposure is best for you so this is the area of the sun where you should be uh, paying attention so your exposures during rehearsals and your final uh, during the eclipse must be geared towards photographing the limb in correct exposure shooting this kind of a uh, movie it's not easy why is it not easy because the sun will drift in the field of view and if the sun is moving here and there during the entire 3 and a half hours of the eclipse it will be a humongous task to put it all together at the same place okay here uh, this is the eclipse of 2010 and the filter was removed and if you ask me the question did the camera survive oh yes it did it was photographing the latter part of the eclipse also so here is an example of the sun which is positioned uh, in the center of this movie in post processing but it entails a huge amount of work let me show you an example uh one second let me show you an example uh no one second okay uh it'll come it'll come yeah here it is so here this is this is what is happening in actual the sun is moving all over the place and it will be a humongous task to put all these images at the same place in post processing and look what happens after the annular eclipse is over the photographer has lost interest and the sun is drifting out of the field this will happen with you also but since i have brought it up please don't do it so uh, when you are photographing such a sequence always keep in mind that you have to keep the sun centered very nicely so while shooting keep in mind that you will have to work more and more and more if you let the sun drift all over the place in the so you should take shots at regular short intervals bracketing for clouds bracketing for altitude also uh, during the central phase you can reduce the bracket so that you get more shots uh, between uh, shorter interval between shots so you get more data and more images uh, basically if you Uh, reduce the bracketing you will get more shots if you increase the bracketing you will get less number of usable shots because the camera is uh, shooting unnecessary shots in between but for that uh, a crucial period is 10 minutes before a crucial period is 10 minutes before 10 minutes before the annularity you should decide what kind of bracketing you want to use and whether you want to reduce the bracketing or not in order to increase your uh, image count well as i said this is a bailey's bead special eclipse you can either shoot bailey's beads with the filter or without the filter so now i am showing you uh, two examples this is with the filter rapid exposures one exposures every second were being taken during this eclipse of december 2019 and then finally made it into this movie and here are all the bailey's beads uh, stacked so that um, the exaggerated mountains on the lunar surface can be shown there is another uh, video again from 2019 december eclipse here what i have done is i was shooting rapid exposures at the time of second contact and third contact so all those exposures i have 
let me show this uh, zoomed in so these are all different exposures and the images i have stacked together in a staggered manner uh, just by uh, moving the, each image slightly and because of that i am able to see the exaggerated so these are the lunar mountains depicted by bailey's beads in an exaggerated manner so uh, the rapid exposures that i was giving have been placed in this image uh, in a staggered manner so this is one uh, specialized kind of photography which you can do in a annular eclipse here uh, is a bailey's bead photograph taken with a 500 mm focal length and here is a bailey bead photograph taken with a 2000 mm focal length telescope both of these photographs are with the filter so again if you want to photograph bailey's bead you will have to pay attention at your exposure you see over here the photosphere is slightly overexposed but the bailey's beads are uh, nicely seen so your exposures have to be geared towards the extreme limb of the sun if you want to uh, photograph the bailey's bead nicely if the exposure was less over here according to the photosphere bailey's bead would not have been captured now here is a video of was removed and the focal length used was 4000 mm therefore we were looking at only a part of the sun the brighter part of the sun was on uh, out of the field and these photographs were of very few taken without using any so uh, f ratio of f20 but still it was over uh, quite bright so this particular eclipse the eclipse the annular eclipse of 2010 was really bright but this eclipse uh, next sunday the it's almost total so uh, you will be able to take off your filter but mind you this is a annular eclipse you cannot watch it with your eyes but your camera will be able to take it so be very careful you cannot watch it with your eyes if you watching with naked eyes you always have to use a filter because this is a annular eclipse but if you want to photograph bailey's bead without the filter you are able to do it this will be my view uh, i will be using a 14 inch telescope uh, with a focal length of almost 4 meters 3910 and i'll be using a crop sensor uh, camera and it will capture only part of the sun so this is a simulation you can see the thin crescent of the sun behind the moon and i will only be capturing part of the sun uh, in this 4000 mm uh, telescope and i am um, at the end of the uh, presentation uh, i have already overshot actually by 5 minutes uh, this is a photograph which is called a tutelema i have been uh, photographing this uh, the sun at 11:45 every day whenever it was clear and i started this photography uh, in the month of january and uh, the sun has moved from its southerly uh, position to uh, through the months up 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 and in june over here and now the solstice eclipse will happen right on top of this analemma and i will continue this photography for another year when the sun will go down again and make a figure of 8 and come back to its uh, original position in january so this is a kind of photograph which is unique why unique because uh, this uh, annular eclipse is happening on solstice day so the eclipse will be right on top of this analemma and it's happening in india never again 
so this is a project which i have taken up and it will take a full year to complete well uh, preparation is the key uh, i want to show uh, these photographs this is a tripod which will be shooting the entire eclipse composite in one frame and you can see i want to draw your attention at this large stone and the bungee cords which are holding the tripod very tightly so you need to make your equipment very rigid and this frame was made one day before and the tripod was tied down i had taken the camera home but uh, the quick release plate was not removed further uh, i want to show this particular image since you are photographing the sun it will be sunny and you will not be able to see the screen here i want to bring your attention to the box that i have placed a cardboard box in which i have placed uh, my laptop so that the screen is visible and there is a external keyboard which is close to me also a external uh, mouse also i have placed a umbrella over the over the box so that the sun doesn't shine in my eyes and i am able to see the screen if i am controlling the uh, camera with my laptop you could also make a shade for your uh, uh, camera screen if it is a swivel screen you can make a small box uh, with four sides and put it over your screen so that the screen is visible at the least you must have a umbrella with you a dark black umbrella it will be indispensable in this picture you should also notice that there is a plastic bag on top of the box because we were at uti and it rains over there any time so these are the small preparations which help a lot in giving quality pictures well here is my uh, photo plan i have uh, according to my images i have designated the camera lens mount intervalometer storage card and solar filter this is very uh, important because i'll be carrying about uh, 10 setups and on the site i should not get confused that which storage card card goes with which so all my uh, things are all lined up and practiced before so this photo plan is very important uh, for me well i had lost a card in the 2019 uh, eclipse so you must protect your images um, lost a card means uh, i deleted the images without copying them on my computer so protecting your images is also very important um, i have learned by experience um it's already a little late uh, so i'm going to just give you an overview uh, the complete automation of your shoot is quite simple much simpler than you uh, think um the software can do your entire job and i'm going to suggest the software uh, which is called solar eclipse maestro uh, which is made by xavier jubier and it can be found and downloaded on uh, his website for free so uh, it's such a extreme software that it can provide you uh, control of four cameras it can download weather it can download uh, if you change your location even then it will keep up it can calculate your local circumstances everything 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 for free 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 <laughs> so you can go to his website called uh, xjubier.free.fr and download solar eclipse maestro which runs on a mac and you can do a complete automation of your shoot eclipse here it, uh, it looks like the observer is watching the eclipse and uh, the laptop is connected uh, to the uh, camera and all the automated exposures are going on here also you can see that solar eclipse maestro is running and uh, there are sample scripts also on his website so uh, you can download all this is very easy well uh, i have covered a lot although not everything um, this is the end of my presentation and uh, if you have any questions uh, I'm happy to answer. All right, great. Um, thank you very much, uh, 
Ajay for uh, giving this wonderful talk. I mean, uh, it is so amazing uh, how you have covered all the minutest of the details uh, about the equipment, about the framing, the setup, important things to keep in mind. So it's, uh, it's really wonderful. I think your explanation has been so good that people have been appreciating your words rather than asking questions which I believe you have covered everything. So uh, I don't think there is any question from the audience so far. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, now I can see the uh, comments coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Raghu Kalra says, thank you for the brilliant talk, Ajay. And Thanks, uh, Vijay Kumar also says, very fine presentation. Thanks Vijay Kumar. Uh, so, Quite a quite a uh, coverage you have made in this one hour about the eclipse, and uh, in fact, there, there has been quite a few things that I also learned today. So uh, I nice. think uh, nice. there, there are no more questions. So we can uh, say thank you to you, thank you and so uh, we can end the broadcast. Uh, is there any message for uh, the audience one last time before we say goodbye, Ajay? Oh, um, take your umbrellas, take your bandana. And uh, I have actually purchased uh, a few caps which cover my neck, which cover my cheeks, and uh, I'll be carrying those. So it's going to be hot. It's going to be the hottest eclipse there is. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So thank you very much for joining us uh, here. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Ajay, for uh, taking our time. I know it's just a week from now. Uh, not even a week left technically. So you have done a fantabulous job with the presentation. I understand it has taken a lot of your time. I am extremely grateful to you. So thank you so very much about it. Good day. Okay. Bye-bye everyone. Bye. Uh, Sneha. Thank you.